This tutorial will reveal how to utilize the strengths of Spark ML Lib, Spark SQL, and H2O's library of distributed algorithms. First, make sure you have Spark downloaded. If you do not have Spark, download it and make sure that you choose the appropriate package type for standalone mode. Now we will download Sparkling Water. Go to h2o.ai slash download and scroll down to the Download Sparkling Water H2O's Integration to Spark heading. Download the version of Sparkling Water that is compatible with the version of Spark that you are using. Now open the terminal on your computer and CD to the Downloads folder. Then unzip the Sparkling Water installation and CD into the subdirectory. Untar the Spark installation and set spark underscore home to the directory path. We're going to launch a local sparkling water cluster and access it from a spark or sparkling shell. Configure the cluster to launch 1 gig executors for a cluster size of about 3 gigs and run a Scala script by appending the argument dash i followed by the sparkling Scala script. Then go to github.com slash h2o ai and click on sparkling water. Open the examples folder and then the scripts folder. Then click the craigslist job titles.scala file for your own reference. This particular use case takes approximately 14,000 job titles off of the craigslist bay area listings to build a model that classifies the job titles to one of the following job categories, accounting, administrative, customer, service, education, or labor. The first step is to tokenize words for each job title while removing words that do not add any value when classifying job categories. These words are called stop words, and in addition to removing them, we also remove non-words, strip punctuation, and lowercase everything, and remove words that are used less than a certain number of times. We then employ the word to vec algorithm. Word to vec stands for word to vector, and it is a way to encode the meaning of a word in a given text document, and then represent this meaning as a vector of real numbers. Since word to vec produces vector representations of single words rather than a string of words such as a job title, we take the average of individual word vectors in a given title composed of n words. We are now ready to model. We have our target variable and our input features, which are the average title vectors for each given job title of n words. We can utilize H2O's distributed and parallel library of algorithms to train a classifier for a given task. At this point, we can either continue coding in Sparkling Shell, or we can use H2O's web-based GUI called Flow for model building, tuning, and performance metrics. We will use flow in this tutorial. The last command in the given code calls the flow UI. This will prompt flow to open in your browser. Click on get frames and then split the frames in order to create test and train frames. In models like GBM and Deep Learning, it is important to make sure that the model doesn't overfit, meaning it will produce good results on historical or the training data, but new data coming in will get scored with bad predictions. The test and train split allows the user to validate the model on a testing set to prevent 
productionalizing bias or overfitted models. Now click Build a Model. In the drop down menu next to Select an Algorithm, choose Gradient Boosting Machine. Then in the drop down menu next to Training Frame, select Train. And in the menu next to Validation Frame, choose Test. Scroll down, and in the drop down menu next to Response Column, select Target. Then change the number of trees to 100 to increase the accuracy of your model. Now click Build a Model. Then select View to see your model. On the scoring history plot, the orange curve that you see on the top is based on the test data, while the blue one that you see on the bottom is based on the train data. This is typically what you'll expect since the model was built to minimize the mean square error on the training set. However, as long as the mean square error is decreasing for the validation or test data, the model is not overfitting and the model isn't built on too many trees. Finally, check the confusion matrices for a multinomial classification model to ensure the error rate for each class and not just the overall error rate is low, to ensure you predict for minority classes well enough. Use the K-ratio hit rate to get an idea of how accurate your model is if you can present the user with the top two or three highest probability classes instead of the class with the highest probability.